Well, good morning, and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. It is Monday, January 17th, the second week of Ordinary Time, and it is the Memorial of St. Anthony the Great, um, who's uh, one of the Desert Fathers, um, who lived a life of, and who's a hermit, so he's also, he's got many nicknames, you know, St. Anthony. This is not the St. Anthony of Padua, uh, the patron saint of those of lost things. So it's, it's a different St. Anthony. So this is St. Anthony the Great, uh, also known as St. Anthony of Egypt, Anthony the Abbot, Anthony of the Desert, uh, Anthony the Hermit, and all that other stuff. And he's the, you know, he, he was the ideal model of <clears throat> Christian monasticism, um, being one of the Desert Fathers of what it means to truly give your life of everything to the Lord. So he is the, he is known as the father of all monks. Um, and he's the patron saint of animals, farmers, and butchers. So that is St. Anthony the Great, who was around in the late 200s, early 300s. He, was, he lived to be about 100 years old. Um, actually, 105 is what it says. But anyway, today's gospel is from Mark chapter 2, verses 18 through 22. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The disciples of John and of the Pharisees were accustomed to fast. People came to him and objected. Why did the disciples of John and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunken cloth on an old cloak. If he does, its fullness pulls away. The new from the old, and the tear gets worse. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst on the skins, and both the wine and the skins are ruined. Rather, new wine is poured into fresh wineskins. Okay, so we've got the question about fasting in today's gospel from Mark, um, in which there's some confusion of like, why do the disciples of John and the Pharisees fast, but Jesus's are not fasting? And you could take this as like, maybe you know, Jesus maybe has his nose stuck up, stuck up in the air, of saying like, his disciples don't need to fast because I'm here but they didn't quite fully understand it. Um, but that's why we are, you know, it's interesting, you know, whenever you have, you hear all these different arguments of, you know, we don't need to fast, you know, faith, faith is separate from works. Um, but the three strongest ways to show reverence to the Lord was through fasting, almsgiving, and prayer. And they're often all three coupled together. And that is what, it's really what St. Anthony the Great recognized. You know, fasting, almsgiving, and, and prayer. Because he sold everything. The only thing he didn't sell uh, initially was enough stuff to take care of his, his sick sister. Because his parents died whenever he, whenever he was only 20. Um, and so he was left to take care of his sister. But even then, eventually, he left his sister to... To um, a convent to take care of her, and he literally sold everything. And um, so he he did the fasting. That's the almsgiving. Then of course a life of prayer and asceticism. And he got rid of the old and went with the new. Where he made that clear break of the of whatever his past was, and fully committed to something new that would help him grow in holiness and his particular vocation, uh, which is what we are all called to do as Christians. Um, you know, not get into this trap of comparison, of thinking that we're not as worthy as them, or we're not this, that, or the other, because we all have our own unique call, but we can only get there and figure it out and discern it through the proper means of fasting, prayer, and thanksgiving. And so, since we have the question about fasting, you know, and, it, and it's out with the old and with the new. What is it that we need to 
rid ourselves of and completely start anew. Maybe something from our past, something from going on right now, whether it be a thought, an action, or a deed. Maybe it's, I don't know, fasting from drinking or fasting from social media or fasting from, you know, we know what our biggest vices are. The goal of every Christian is to remove vice and replace it with virtue. So what do we need to take out from the old, our vices, and replace anew with virtue today and every day? So that's the goal. That's the challenge. Best of luck. Have a great day. God bless. Keep it real. And happy birthday to my new nephew. Prayers up to make sure everything goes well today for my sister, brother-in-law, and uh, the baby boy. Have a great day. God bless. Keep it real. In the Father, Son, and Spirit, amen.